You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, the first step in keeping Donald Trump off the ballot in one state in 2024 was just successful. Can you explain what happened here? Yeah, so there was a suit filed in the courts of Colorado to try to disqualify Donald Trump from being on the ballot for president there. And a judge just ruled that she would not dismiss the case. Donald Trump moved to dismiss the case, saying it somehow violated his First Amendment free speech rights. And the judge said no. And it looks like the case will proceed to trial uh, very shortly. Now, what are the next steps here? Like how many more cases until we actually reach a decision? Because I'm assuming that this first step was just kind of a uh, you know, kind of a perfunctory motion, if you will. So what, what are the steps that are going to be subsequent to that? Yeah. So the next step is there will be a trial. It's going to be held later this month. And, it you know, the judge will decide the issue of whether Donald Trump, after taking an oath to support the Constitution, engaged in insurrection or gave aid and comfort to those who did. The available evidence suggests the answer to both of those questions is yes. He engaged in, he assisted in insurrection, and he continues to give aid and comfort to the insurrectionists by, for example, promising to pardon them if he's elected president again. So there will be a trial to see whether, in fact, the evidence proves that he's disqualified under the 14th Amendment for participating in the insurrection. Once that trial is held, um, the result will almost inevitably be appealed, regardless of which side wins and which side loses, then it will very quickly on an expedited schedule work its way through the Colorado court system, and it will probably be appealed up to the Supreme Court. Right. Okay. So you're saying that it'll jump from the state court system over to the federal court system, because obviously the issue of electing a president is a federal issue. We, we've heard from all of these secretaries of state around the country that, you know, for this issue to finally be litigated, it'll ultimately likely be up to the Supreme Court to make that determination. Is this case in Colorado what will ultimately lead to that decision by the U.S. Supreme Court? You know, it looks like it very well may. So this case was filed by a, a nonprofit organization called Crew Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. They actually brought the suit against Donald Trump and interestingly against the Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold, you know, Jenna Griswold, as secretary of state in Colorado, has the responsibility for overseeing, you know, the, the election process and importantly, overseeing who is qualified and who's not qualified to be on the presidential ballot. So, you know, it looks like this case may be the first one to bubble up to the Supreme Court, but there have been suits filed in other states as well. There is a suit already pending in Michigan. There's one pending in Minnesota. And it's anybody's guess as to which one might be resolved first and might be appealed to the Supreme Court first. But the one in Colorado is on a pretty tight deadline. There is a January 5th deadline um, for this case to be resolved because that's when they begin printing the presidential ballots for the Republican primary in Colorado, which is held in March. Wow. So we'll have an answer on this within the next three months, one way or the other. This issue will finally be put to rest. It, so it sounds that way. And listen, I think we're going to see more suits filed as well, because in states where people refuse to put Donald Trump on the ballot, well, then Trump will probably sue. In states right. where they decide to put Donald Trump on the ballot, any number of organizations or the voters in that state might bring suit. So I have a feeling we only have three lawsuits on the books now to stop Donald Trump from being on the presidential ballot. But I suspect we're going to see many more. Glenn, you mentioned that Crew, the organization that brought about this lawsuit, um, did so in Colorado. Is there a reason you presume that they did so in Colorado? Is there is there a reason? I mean, this is a national organization. Why move forward in that state in particular? Does it have something to do with, with the court system there or the appeals court or the circuit court there that they wanted to take advantage of? Yeah, that's a great question, Brian. I think we have to read between the lines a little bit. I think one of the reasons is, you know, first of all, um, Colorado might have a slightly more accelerated timetable. Um, so maybe they thought they could push that case through the courts uh, more rapidly than in other states. But here's what I think might be going on. So the Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold, a Democrat, has already said a couple of important things that might have pushed crew in, you know, into the Colorado courts. One, 
She said that she believes Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection and or gave aid and comfort to those who did. You know, anybody with uh, a couple of uh, eyes and the ability to absorb facts and think critically would probably reach that conclusion. But she's on the record and she is the person responsible for overseeing the election process in Colorado. So that is one point in favor of bringing the case there. And then the other thing she said was something along the lines of she will honor whatever the court says with respect to whether Donald Trump is disqualified or not. So, you know, put those two things together. It sounds like Colorado was ripe to have this decided by the courts and then have the secretary of state in that state agree to do whatever it was the court ruled. And do you presume that however the court does ultimately rule that the other 49 states are going to have to abide by that same decision by the U.S. Supreme Court? You know, they should. I mean, once the Supreme Court decides the law of the land for better or worse in recent years, it's been for worse, then that is the law that is supposed to apply across all 50 states. So, you know, I, I think the, the battle is just sort of getting warmed up. But I think there are a number of reasons to be hopeful that Donald Trump does not become the nominee, whether it's a result of the 14th Amendment challenges in the courts, whether it's a result of his criminal prosecutions, you know, that that he has now, you know, by the bucket load, he's got four felony uh, prosecutions up and running against him, two state and two federal. You know, it does feel like at some point the Republican Party will have to wrestle with the, the fact, the reality that Donald Trump is probably not the best nominee for president. Yeah, well, I mean, as we can see with this uh, speaker selection process, they they shouldn't have any problems picking a suitable replacement. I think that's something that we've all learned based on the, the whole Jim Jordan of it all. Glenn, given your knowledge of the Constitution, do you believe that Trump should be disqualified based on the 14th Amendment? Absolutely, because the 14th Amendment is not a dead amendment. It's not some historical, you know, relic that can't be used. It doesn't have to be used all that often. Why? Well, because insurrectionists generally aren't running for federal office. But, you know, it is just as alive. It is just as vibrant and vital as are the other amendments. The First Amendment's protection of free speech. The Fourth Amendment's prohibition against unreasonable searches and seizures. Wait, 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 wait. Are you trying to suggest that the 14th Amendment is just as valid as the Second Amendment? You noticed I skipped over that one. Um, <laughs> yeah. and I, actually, I, I also didn't mention the Third Amendment's quartering soldiers in our homes because hopefully that won't be happening anytime soon. But but here's yeah. the point. I mean, all of the amendments are just as vital and just as important, you know, as they ever were. Frankly, I would argue, Brian, that prohibiting an insurrectionist from either serving in Congress or serving in the White House is probably even more important than prohibiting a police officer from engaging in an unreasonable search and seizure against a citizen. That is also a grave constitutional violation. But, you know, if we have an insurrectionist in the Oval Office, that affects us all. And that could, in a very real sense, lead to the end of our democracy. So when I assess the evidence and when I read the 14th Amendment's prohibition, which simply says, after somebody has taken an oath, to support the Constitution, if that person engages in insurrection or rebellion or gives aid and comfort to those who did, they can't serve in office, state or federal. The real, uh, the real challenge here is the 14th Amendment doesn't say, how do you accomplish these things? And there are at least three ways that these thing, this thing could be accomplished. One, a secretary of state like Jenna Griswold, who is responsible for either putting a name on the presidential ballot or refusing to put a name on the presidential ballot, can make the decision. You know, if a 34-year-old came to Secretary of State Griswold and said, I want to be on the presidential ballot, what would she say? No, because constitutionally, you are disqualified. You haven't reached 35 years of age yet. The same should hold true for insurrectionists. The second way it could happen is the court could order it. The third way it could happen, this is a little bit of a dark horse candidate, but when you read the 14th Amendment, it says insurrectionists are disqualified, but Congress can remove the disqualification with a vote of two thirds of the members of Congress. 
Well, here is a question for the constitutional scholars out there. If Congress can remove the disqualification, can't Congress impose the disqualification? I would argue there is some, some interpretation of the text of that amendment that says yes. So there are there's lots of uncharted waters because we don't have to disqualify people for you know engaging in an insurrection every day of the week, but we've got to do right. it now. And I think you know all of these different ways to do it are going to be tested. Okay, and let's finish off with this. If this is the case that's ultimately going to go up to the Supreme Court and Crew has brought about this case, is Crew basically going to be arguing in front of the Supreme Court or whatever lawyers are are um, representing Crew going to be arguing in front of the Supreme Court as to why Donald Trump should be disqualified from being able to run for office based on the 14th Amendment? Is this going to be the insurrection argument in front of the Supreme Court based on this case? It sure is. Assuming the Supreme Court accepts review of this case, it sure feels like they probably would. And he, and here's the thing. This is the silver lining lurking behind the big black cloud that is Donald Trump. The Supreme Court, if they do anything to enable a guy like Donald Trump to retake the Oval Office, to become president again, Donald Trump is an aspiring dictator. He said he wants to cancel the Constitution. If the Supreme Court puts a dictator back in the Oval Office. You know what a dictator has absolutely no use for? A Supreme, Supreme court. court. So I think poorly enough of the Supreme Court and their motivations, self-preservation being most important among them, that I don't think there's a chance in hell they will put an aspiring dictator back in the Oval Office. That will be lurking in the back of their minds, and they will probably find some constitutional construction or interpretation that will let them get to the result they want, at least that block of six on the Supreme Court. Okay, well, that seems like a good place to leave off. Obviously, with the speed with which this case is moving and the hard deadline that's going to be coming up in January to actually print these ballots, we should have uh, some answers here pretty soon. So if you want to stay on top of all this stuff, make sure to subscribe. The links are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.